What is up guys, DS3TV here and we are back for another video and we are here to watch the greatest speech in history, Alexander the Great. This is part of the Alexander the Great series. We have one more episode left because I seen another episode that they put in there too. So we're going to be watching that um, probably tomorrow. And yeah, so expect another video coming out today and it's going to, this one's going to be probably like an average length video. It's like seven, it's like a seven minute video, but you know. I definitely do talk talk through it so you know go to this link in the description you will find the link for my discord server you will find the link for my twitch you will find the link for the original video if you want to watch it on their channel without my commentary and yeah so let's get into it and all right let's get into it and play So this is the speech that you guys were that he was that Epic History was talking about last time. Excuse me, last time. Executed thirteen. Of what I'm about to say isn't meant to stop you returning home. As far as I care, you can go wherever you wish. But I want you to know how you have behaved towards me. And how I have treated you. I'll begin, as is right, with my father, Philip. When he found you, you were mere peasants. Wearing hides. Tending a few sheep on the mountain slopes. And you could barely defend them from your neighbors. Under him, you began living in cities with good laws and customs, and he turned you from slaves into rulers over those very barbarians who used to plunder your land. He conquered most of Thrace, taking the best harbors so there was trade and prosperity, and put the mines to steady work. The Thessalians, they used to terrify you. Well, we rule them now. The Athenians and Thebans, always looking for a chance to attack Macedonia, were so humbled, myself playing my small part in the war, that they no longer take tribute from Macedonia, but instead depend upon us for their protection. My father went to the Peloponnese and put their house in order. Then he was declared supreme commander of all the Greeks for the campaign against the Persians. An honor not just for himself, but for all Macedonians. This is what my father Philip did for you. Great enough on its own, but small compared to what you've gained from me. I crossed the Hellespont, even though back then the Persians still commanded the sea. I defeated the satraps of the great King Darius and made you rulers of Ionia, Aeolus, Phrygia and Lydia and took Miletus by siege. The rest of the land surrendered willingly and their wealth became yours. All the riches of Egypt and Cyrene, which I won without a fight, are yours now. Syria. Palestine, Mesopotamia. Definitely, he took over like the whole entire world. Compared to his father, he did, he conquered a lot more than his father did. Babylonia, all belong to you. The wealth of Lydia, the treasures of Persia, the jewels of India and the outer sea. You are now satraps. You are generals and captains. What have I held back for myself apart from this purple cloak and diadem? Nothing. No man can point to my riches, only the things I hold in trust for you all. And what would I do with them anyway? I eat what you eat. I get no more rest than you. Many times I have spent the night on watch so that you could sleep soundly. But that's a true showmanship of a leader. Like, 
you shouldn't if you're like you know if you're leading a group that's that big you should not be you shouldn't be like you know acting like you you like you need more sleep than everybody else and stuff like that because no they're not going to put their trust they're not going to put all of their trust in you because they're not going to fall behind you if you get what i mean who among you believes he's worked harder for me than i have for him come on if you've got scars strip and show them to me I'll show you mine. There isn't one part of my body, the front at least, that doesn't bear a wound. My body's covered in scars from every weapon you can think of. Swords, arrows, stones, clubs. All for the sake of your lives, your glory and your wealth. And yet here I still am, leading you, as conqueror of land and sea, rivers, mountains and the plains. We've celebrated our weddings together. Many of your children will be cousins of my own. I've paid off your debts without asking how you got them, even though you're paid well enough and pillage every city we take. Many of you wear golden crowns, badges of courage and honor given you by me. Any one of us who was killed, who met a glorious end, we buried with full honors. Many now stand immortalized by bronze statues in Macedonia. Their families are honored and pay no taxes. He did a lot. I must say he did. He did a, a lot of stuff, like for real. I can see why they, you know, went back to him. Under my command, not one man has been killed fleeing the enemy. And now, I wanted to send back some of you who've been wounded or crippled, or have grown old, to be welcomed back home as heroes. But since you all wish to go, then all of you, go! Go home and tell them that your king, Alexander, conqueror of the Persians, Medes, Bactrians, and Scythians, who now rules over the Parthians, Chorasmians, and Hyacanians as far as the Caspian Sea, who's marched over the mountains of the Hindu Kush, crossed the Oxus and Tanais rivers, even the Indus, first to cross it since Dionysus himself. I would have crossed the high faces too if you hadn't cowered in fear, who sailed into the great sea from the mouth of the Indus who crossed the desert of Gedrosia, where no one had ever led an army. Who took Carmenia, while my fleet sailed the Persian Gulf. When you get home, you tell them that when you made it back to Susa, you abandoned him and went home, leaving him under the protection of the foreigners you'd conquered. Perhaps this report of yours will seem glorious in the eyes of men, and worthy in the eyes of the gods. Be gone! After the speech, the Macedonian troops begged Alexander for forgiveness, leading to an emotional reconciliation between the king and his army. Alexander plan began to plan further conquests. But in Babylon, less than a year later, he succumbed to an unknown illness and died at, ju I mean, age just 32. Thank you to all the Patreon support. That was a good video. Um, talk to you guys in the next video. Also, um, what say? Oh yeah. Uh, sorry for not streaming yesterday. Back was hurting a lot. Uh, follow the Discord. I mean, uh, get join my Discord server because I will. I put messages in there first. Like if I forget to put messages anywhere else. Um. So yeah, like if I don't have videos coming out today or something like that, I always put messages in there first. So yeah. Follow the Discord server and uh, yeah, peace.